Anton Leder's production of the famous short story, The Yellow Wallpaper, starring Agnes Moorhead. I've never seen a worse wallpaper in my life. All those strangled heads and bulbous eyes and fungus growth seem to shriek with derision. When we came to this house, the minute I saw it, I made up my mind secretly to start writing again in spite of them. But I don't dare let John know I'm keeping this journal. It's difficult being married to a doctor. John's an excellent doctor, I'm sure, but he's so inconsistent about me. He says I'm not really sick, that I'm only a little run down from caring for the baby, that I have a temporary nervous depression, yet he prescribes phosphates or phosphites, I don't know which, and tonics and exercise. And he absolutely forbids me to work until I'm well again. He hates for me to write a word. But writing is such a relief to my mind. I can write down things, tell things here that... No, John says I'm not to brood about those things. I confess they make me feel bad, so I'll only write about the house. I saw it for the first time today. It's the most beautiful place. John rented it for the summer, and we drove up today a perfect June morning. The bay and the white sails and people already in swimming, and then the shaded lane and the riotous old-fashioned flowers and the gnarly trees and the house. The house standing alone in the summer stillness. I could never tell John, but you know, the house spoke to me. It was only because he rattled on so that I couldn't hear what Reminded he... me of those English places you read about. Gardeners, cottages and everything, and at only 200 a month. Hedges and walls and gates that lock, and there's a ghostliness. Remember, I rented it just for you, darling. And you're going to let Jenny do all the work while you live like, uh, well, like a prince. You like it, darling? You speak up. Yes, John. Yes, it's lovely, but it's strange, as though it might be haunted. <laughs> Darling, you've got that look on your face again. That dopey look. Well, Jean is home. There's a station wagon. And if I know my dear sister, she's already turned the place inside out and cleaned it top to bottom. John, is it haunted, do you think? What? The house? Uh-huh. At 200 a month? <laughs> well, that's asking too much of faith. Come on. How about... You always laugh at anything you can't touch or see or put down in figures. There is something strange about the house, I think. If it. you weren't always imagining... I'm not things. imagining. One reason I don't get well is that you don't believe me. You don't even believe I'm sick. You tell my friends and relatives. I, I've heard you. I've heard you that there's nothing wrong with there me. There is nothing wrong I with see you. you say it again. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't cry. Now, come along. <laughs> Let's go inside. And so I came into this house in tears. It was wrong. It was all wrong. Maybe the house saw me crying or this room. I got so unreasonably angry with John. I shouldn't, I know. He's so careful and loving and I repay him so badly. I should control myself, at least in front of him. But it makes me so tired not to show what I feel. Jenny met us at the door. Naturally, she saw I'd been crying, but she took pains to ignore it. Well, hello, you two. You're early. You must have started at the crack of dawn. How was the trip? Made it in less than two hours. They're like his peas in a pod, Jenny and John, both efficient and kind. And how did you bear up, Pet? Oh, very well, thank you, Jenny. Both kind and both somehow cruel, but I don't really think that. Well, you're just in time for lunch. I bought a flounder down at the wharf and cooked it with capers and cream. Sound good? Wonderful, Jenny. May I see the house first? The whole grand tour? Oh, pet, the flounder will cook to death. Well, at least my room. Our room. (laughs) All right, if you (laughs) insist. But if that fish is spoiled, don't blame me. Why would I blame her? Whose room is this, Jenny? Yours? Uh Uh-huh, it's small, but it's near the door and the telephone. Oh, John, John, look. Let's take this one for you and me. I love those roses over the window. I've already put your things upstairs, pet. Well, this has a little porch and such pretty old-fashioned chintz hangs. Well, you'll love the room upstairs, darling. As you can see, there's no room in here for two beds. And I won't hear of being in separate rooms. I'm going to make you rest and take your tonic. John and I have talked it all over. And the room at the top of the house has so many windows. And you know, darling, you must absorb lots of fresh air. Get your appetite back. They smother me with concern. They crush me with kindness. Come along. <laughs> There's a good girl. <sighs> All right. You know what's best. A- and you're going to like that nursery. It gets loads of sunshine.
up the steep narrow stairs, two stories up to the very top of the house. There's a gate at the top that locks. I wonder why. And beyond the gate is the nursery room, this room. It is big and airy, nearly a whole floor with windows that look every way. They say it was a nursery. But what was it, really? Open them all, Jenny. Wide. All right. Well, darling? Why are the windows barred? Uh, for the little children. Otherwise, it wouldn't be safe. Oh, yeah. I suppose. Children climb around so, don't they? <laughs> what are those, those rings and things in the walls? Oh, I expect they made it into a gymnasium when the children got older. Uh, a sort of playground. Oh, they must have hated the wallpaper. <laughs> well, they were rough on it, that's for sure. The way they've stripped it off in patches. I don't blame them. It's hideous. Oh, who wants to look at the wallpaper with this view? My, you can see the whole bay. It's a revolting color. It's unclean. Such a strange, sickish yellow there where the sun's faded it. I never saw worse paper oh, in my don't life. Don't dramatize it, darling. You must be hungry, and I know you're tired. I'm not tired. Why do you both act this way? I say the wallpaper's ugly, and you look at each other. Your eyes shuttle back and forth, and suddenly you both act as though I'd lost my... Darling, reason. that was something we weren't going to say. Be a good girl, pet. We don't act anyway. We just don't want you to worry. We want you to be well. It's true, that's all they want. John laughs at me, of course, but one expects that in marriage. And he says I have foolish fancies and he sometimes can talk them away, but not this time. No matter what he says, it's a smoldering, sulfurous, unclean, it's hideous wallpaper. No wonder the children scratched at it and stripped it down. No wonder they gouged the plaster with their little fingernails. No wonder they hate it. I hate it myself. And somehow... I feel it hates me. We've been here two weeks and I haven't felt like riding again since that first day. I'm sitting by the window now up in this frightful nursery room. There's nothing to stop my riding as much as I please. John is away all day and sometimes even at night if he has a serious case. I'm glad my case is not serious. But these nervous troubles can be depressing all the same. I cry at nothing and cry most of the time. John doesn't know how much I suffer. He knows there's no reason to suffer and that satisfies him. I suppose John was never nervous in his life. He laughs at me so about this wallpaper. <laughs> No, I won't let you have your way, you silly goose. If we'd taken the room downstairs, you'd be seeing faces in the chin straight. Not faces. Look at that spot, John. Ma and that one over there. Yes, I see. It's a repeating pattern. It's a broken neck with two bulging eyes staring at me upside down. <laughs> and to me, it's a climbing ivy or some kind of a vine. Take your choice. Could be anything. Besides, I can't repaper a room just for a three months rental. Well, then let's move downstairs. Take me away from her. Don't you see, John? It hates me. I wish I'd get well faster. Just use your will and your good sense, darling. I'm afraid. But you're so much better. When I married you, I meant to be such a help, but I'm only a burden. You are a help to me. You're my comfort. I can't even be with my baby. It makes me so nervous. Will I ever be well enough to see him again? Of course you'll be well, <laughs> if you try. Then I'll try, I promise. 